Good morning. And welcome to Word of Life Lutheran Church on the second Sunday of Easter. We will be having an outdoor worship at 11 o'clock. It's uh, gorgeous out there right now. And so um, we should be able to be doing that at least until next December if we need to. No, I'm kidding. We shouldn't need to. We we'll begin our worship with a thanksgiving for baptism, which is on the first page of your bulletin. You may stand if you are able. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, <coughs> like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. The opening hymn is 363, Come You Faithful, Raise the Strain.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Let us pray together. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> the first lesson is from the book of Acts, the fourth chapter. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses, houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The psalmody is Psalm 133. Boy, both the first lesson and the psalmody seem to be uh, record setters in shortness and brevity. <laughs> We'll read it responsibly. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the bread, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, flowing down upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. The second lesson is from 1 John, the first chapter going into the second chapter. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our own eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of God life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declared to you the entire internal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, 
He who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand at his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. <coughs> Be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, Amen. So if anybody was expecting, as usual, the, the, um, the sermon after the Sunday of Easter, the second Sunday of Easter, it's usually about Thomas. I'm leaving him out this time. We're going a different direction. We're going in the direction that the second lesson from 1 John is taking us. So I entitled this, well, what do you say? And you're thinking, oh my gosh, that could be, that could be broad, that could be far-reaching. But I say that because the second lesson from 1 John makes several declarations. If we were to put the country accent onto this, it would be the writer declaring, I do declare. And so first, we declare to you, the writers say, what was heard and what was seen. And so that does relate to Thomas because he needed to see and hear Jesus. And so that hearing and seeing we then extend to our times as well. We too then declare what we have read about in scripture, that Jesus' followers heard and saw him resurrected. The first paragraph of what they have heard and seen is all about life with God. The writers declare the eternal life, which was with the Father and also revealed by his Son. The writers declare, and it's writers because they use the pronoun we, the writers declare so that this people may be in fellowship with them, which means fellowship with the Father as revealed by the Son. <clears throat> so we declare to all those around us 
And we're going to have the opportunity as we worship outside to declare loudly in our outdoor worship all that we have read about how the disciples have seen and heard. By doing so, we are declaring who we are. And then we make welcome anyone who would like to join our fellowship. To those around us, there may not appear to be anything unique about our fellowship of Lord of Life here. Or maybe we're known as the church with, which borders like Benson Park on that side, and then across the street is White Deer Park. And when they used to have the White Deer Park trick-or-treat thing, that's usually the way we were described. That's you down there, right? Oh, you're right next to White Deer Park. But we should see ourselves in a different way and be ready to declare ourselves in fellowship with God the Father and His Son, who has revealed His Father to us. That is whom we are. You've probably heard this way too often from me, that as someone from two generations removed from Ukraine, I or my father or my paternal grandparents would not ever want to be grouped into the collective of Russia. We're Ukrainian. That's who we are. That's my background. Similarly, another country in that, in that neck of the world, the country of Poland, has had decades, maybe even centuries of instability run by other countries. And in 1923 and then into 1924, they acquired some form of stability like they had not experienced for many years. And it was a stability where many Jewish people were comfortable living in Poland at the time. And so in a book written by a Jewish lady um, with a Jewish background, which is talking about the resistance in Warsaw, I discovered this Jewish joke that was making around in the 1920s, apparently. A man asked whether his town is now Polish or Soviet territory. And the answer he is told is, this year, we're in Poland. The man who asked the question declares, thank goodness, I simply could not have taken another Russian winner. Now, I don't mean to make that Jewish, um, Polish joke, um, you know, as, a, as an ethnic thing, because as Zemnansky, I certainly um, can relate. From my childhood, I've been very close to Polish background people in our neighborhood. I've said it before that we were a Polish neighborhood. Koplinski, Boglarski, Bobinski, Sikowski, Michaud, Michaud, that French Canadian guy in there. And my father's co worker, Benny Brzezicki always got us into the gym of St. Stanislaus Roman Catholic Church so that we could play basketball. So if we weren't of Nancy, we would have probably had to change our name somehow to throw a ski on the end. Nonetheless, this of Nancy, amidst all the other skis, was Ukrainian background over against the Polish background of all those around me. And we could be proud of that, whether we're Polish or Ukrainian. But even more important, Lutheran, in the midst of the Polish Catholics. And even more important than that, we're all Christian. And that, I think, figured into Benny Brzezicki always getting us, able to get us into the basketball court, even though we weren't Catholic. National correspondent Ari Shapiro followed a story from Alabama, and this is an amazing story, in which a representative was actually challenging a school district's decision to incorporate yoga into the physical education program of a certain school district. And he challenged it on the grounds that it was not in keeping with Christian tradition. It was Hindu, according to this person. The good thing is that it got nowhere quickly. After all, what would the students do with their yoga pants and mats if they don't have yoga in gym class. And then as Shapiro ended that, that uh, piece, he said he practices yoga, just as I know at least one person does here, and maybe others. He practices yoga, and he's Jewish. Exercise practices don't equate with any particular religious point of view. The writers in the second lesson move away then from the word declare and move on to other words that really are synonyms of declaring, proclaiming, saying. 
We need to be honestly walking in the light, the writers say. And if we're walking in darkness, we must not say that we're in the light. The message here is that we must proclaim that God is light, and we are then included in that fellowship of light. And, he gives the reason, and they give the reason why. Because the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed us from all the sin, so that we can rise out of whatever darkness we're in and be part of the light. And then we hear him proclaim the following, which should touch our hearts each time we use this as a confession. And we, uh, we used to use it a lot more than we have recently. The writers say, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the basic response to the confession in the form of absolution, as I would say, is similar like this. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of God, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So what the pastor is saying there, what I am saying there, is that our sins are forgiven. They are swept away. They are gone. And what do we say to that? How do we express our sheer delight about that? Well, we can shout out our hallelujahs. We can shout out our praises to our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And maybe we can do a little exercise of dance upon hearing such good news. Nonetheless, the writers of 1 John still say that people should not sin. Remember, there are two types of sins. Sin can be a sin of commission, simply that you do something that you should not do. Or it could be a sin of omission, that which you should have done but did not do. So I uplift the opportunities to then speak out against injustices of racial discrimination, of wanting to help the poor and those who may, may be refugees. And when we don't do that, then we are, we are committing sins of omission. That is doing nothing when we, do, when we don't do anything. We are omitting what we should do. So just prior to the pandemic, I think it was this past year, I attended the Muslim community's open house in Raleigh, which of course was a fantastic event, but it reminded me of this little piece of history, which even as it's described on the internet, it's a little known piece of history. And I gotta try pronouncing these guys' names. Ab Abdel Qadr Ben Gabrit, aka, <laughs> if you don't like that, you can use an e easier name, Sai Kadur Ben Gabrit. He was the first rector of the Great Mosque of Paris. He, as the leader of that Great Mosque and the leader of this movement, and those who re he recruited to the cause, mainly Algerian partisans in, in Paris, saved at least 500 Jews, and some say up to a 1600 during the Nazi occupation of France in World War II. So if we're thinking about people in the world that are probably at most odds with one another would be, of course, Muslims and Jews. Not in this instance at all. Not in this instance at all because of his leadership and the people of the mosque in Paris. The last verse in our text states that Christ is the atoning sacrifice for all. Not just our sins, but for the sins of the entire world. And then going back up to the beginning of our text in the second lesson, in the second verse, the writers mention hearing, seeing, touching the word of life. Now even though that piece of history which I just mentioned is not well known that happened in Paris, Probably now, with our, with our live stream and then with our outdoor worship coming up, close to 100 people will know about it. And I'm going to use my words here. The Jewish children of God in Paris were given even more than the word of life. They were given life itself by the Muslim children of God who hid Jews in the mosques and in their homes. That action itself was seemingly a very minor, but very significant way by which the sins of the world were taken away. The ultimate way that sins of the world were taken away was through the atonement of Jesus Christ 
through his sacrifice on the cross and his rising to life for the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The hymn of the day is number 380, Hallelujah, Jesus Lives. seated. So many things we do during this pandemic are, are done basically with the people that can be from afar in mind. But healing can take place no matter what our circumstances. So we are here in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who restored the sick to health and who himself suffered for our sake. He is present among us still to heal and to make whole. We entrust those who are sick from our Lord of Life community of faith to the grace and power of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the Lord may ease their pain and despair and grant them improved and continued health along with renewed life here and eternal salvation. The writer of James says, declares, Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick people, sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. So for those who um, would wish healing, I lay my hand upon you, Julie, in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, asking him to uphold you until you were saved, the kingdom and the healing power of his God. Say like that amen to um, and do that amen, amen in the sense of the Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eric, I lay, I lay my hands upon you in petition in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, asking him to uphold you until you were saved, the kingdom and the healing power of his God. And from the petition in um symbolically I amen to his Lord in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bow our hearts in prayer. God of mercy, source of all healing, we give you thanks for your gifts of strength and life, and especially the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we have health and salvation. Help us by your Holy Spirit to feel your power in our lives, to know your internal love, and through Jesus Christ our Lord, to know your love for us. Amen. And I, I do want to include, um, as well from a distance, um, Bud and then Dennis. So from a distance, we lay our hands upon Bud and Dennis in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, asking him to uphold them and fill them with grace that they may know the healing power of his love. And we anoint symbolically with oil in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may stand for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and to answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth, so that with one heart it may testify to the res resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God. You proclaim the blessing of life evermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation a promise of new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You direct the nations, O God. Guide all in authority, that they may shepherd their peoples in the way of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority, and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we may provide for the needs of others, especially those whom we name from the whiteboard and those whom we name in our hearts before you. Blanca, Les, Dennis, Bud, Bob, Barbara, Robin, Ingrid, Robert, Sandy, Nick, David, Bob, Rebecca, Daniel, Carol, Dave, Tom, Stephanie, Julie, Denise, Eric, Karen, David, and any others whom we name in our hearts before you. Announce your peace to those who are sick, lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Hear us, O God. You give us fellowship with one another in this faith community called Lord of Life Lutheran Church. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together 
so that we live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O God. <coughs> you share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. May his peace be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll close with the Benedictus. <coughs> Christ is alive. Go in peace, share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.